decimal numbers. You went to the grocery store today and checked mm. on the snack shelves. Then you saw changes in the price of your favorite chocolate. Have a look at these numbers, 25 and then 24.998. The former is chocolate's initial price and the latter is its current price. So which one is the decimal number? Decimals are defined as fractions, which have denominators with powers of 10. In a decimal form, there will be a decimal point indicating the place value of the numeral in a whole number. Remember that power of 10 is the multiplication of 10 by itself, such as 10, 100, or 1000, and can be represented as 10 to the power n, whereas n is a factor of multiplication. Let's take 24.998. By definition, we know that decimal numbers are fractions with denominators that have powers of 10. Now to convert this decimal into a fraction, you need to remember a thumb rule. The decimal point is placed at a specific position, exactly to the right of the unit position of the whole number. In the case of 24.998, it is placed exactly to the right of 4. Once you remove the decimal, the number will be divided by powers of 10 equal to the number of spaces after the decimal point, counting from the left, that is, 3. The fraction in the answer can further be simplified by dividing both the numerator and the denominator by a common divisor. In this problem, the common divisor is 2. When 24,998 is divided by 2, we get 12,499. When the denominator 1,000 is divided by 2, we get 500. Since these numbers cannot be commonly divided further, then this is the simplest fraction. Now it is your turn to do the conversion from decimal to fraction. Convert 2.25 to a fraction. You can pause the video, have a go, and then resume the video to see the problem-solving process. First, we will count the number of spaces after the decimal point, counting from the left. The number of spaces is 2. Therefore, once we remove the decimal, the number will be divided by 10 to the power 2. So, 2.25 equals 225 over 100 equals 9 over 4. 9 over 4 is obtained when we simplify 225 over 100 by dividing both the numerator and the denominator with a common divisor of 25. Did you forget to give your answer in the simplest form? If yes, remember, it is always better to write a fraction in its simplest form. Let's go back to the grocery store. As an exercise, and to make sure that you master the thumb rule of the math way, convert some of these decimal prices into fractions. Our next journey now is to learn about all the other types of decimals. Type of decimal numbers. There are mainly two types of decimal numbers, terminating and non-terminating decimals. Terminating decimals are decimals with a finite number of digits after the decimal point. If the final remainder in the long division method is zero, then the fraction is a terminating decimal. Let's take 1 over 8 in rational numbers as an example. When we divide 1 by 8, we get 0 as a remainder. Hence, 0 0.125 is the terminating decimal number that has a finite number of digits. That is, three numbers after the decimal point. Now let's take another number, 1 over 3. No. If we see this example, the division never ends. The remainder again and again appears to be 1, and the quotient keeps on repeating as 0 0.33333 and so on. Therefore, a decimal number where the number of digits after the decimal point is infinite is called a non-terminating decimal number. A decimal number that never ends. The non-terminating decimal number also has two types repeating and non-repeating decimal numbers. When we convert 2 over 3 to a decimal number, it will be a non-terminating repeating decimal number, that is 0 0.666666 and so on. That will be similar to 3 over 11 and 11 over 6, which give the result of repeating decimals that never ends. They are all non-terminating repeating decimal numbers. But the case is different with the square root of 2, which is an irrational number. It will give us the answer, 1.4142135623 and so on. We will soon notice that, for this case, the digits after the decimal point are non-terminating and non-repeating. Hence, this is the second type related to non-terminating decimals. The square root of 3 is also an irrational number. 
How about pie? Yes, definitely not the kind of pie that you expected. It is an irrational pie that gives you non-terminating, non-repeating decimal numbers. Here is a diagram showing the types of decimal numbers that we just studied. Now, how can you tell if a fraction is a terminating decimal? We can resolve the denominator of the fraction into its prime factors. If the prime factors consists of only 2 or 5, or both, then the fraction will absolutely be a terminating decimal. This will be super helpful when you're encountering a large fraction and not sure if the remainder of the long division ever yields zero. Keep in mind that the fraction should be in its simplest form before we start the factorization. Once simplified, you can factorize the denominator and determine the type of decimal. Let's say we have one great fraction. This fraction is already in its simplest form. Before dividing the number, let's see if the fraction will be terminating or non-terminating decimal number. Factorize the denominator so it will be as follows. You can see that the prime factors of the denominator only consists of 2 and 5, without any other number, which means that this fraction will be a terminating decimal number. Conveniently, you also have the information about when the decimal number will terminate. It's done by checking which of the two numbers have the highest power. Since 5 has the highest power, 5 to the power of 9, then the decimal number will terminate after 9 decimal places. 1.79201396 in case of a non-terminating repeating decimal, the highest power of either 2 or 5 shows when the numbers after the decimal place start to repeat itself, instead of yielding zero in terminating decimals. If the denominator prime factors only have other numbers beside 2 or 5, this concept won't be applicable. So for this fraction, at which number the first numbers after the decimal place start to repeat itself? You have faced some of the most difficult exams and are the smartest in your class now. You have so much confidence for the next exam tomorrow, but your overly annoying competitive classmate knows your weakness. You cannot convert fractions into decimal numbers. You hate doing this conversion, and it's already too late to catch up. Your enthusiasm is now ruined, and your life will become a mess. But don't worry, we are here to show you how to do it easily so you can regain your confidence. Let us start the conversion of fractions into decimal numbers. Fractions can be converted to decimals by using several methods. Let's jump to the first method, that is the reverse of the thumb rule in decimal numbers. This is only applicable for the fractions whose denominator is the power of 10. You can revisit the video about decimal numbers to refresh your memory. Here is the thumb rule. The decimal point is placed at a specific position exactly to the right of the unit position of the whole number. Once you remove the decimal, the number will be divided by powers of 10, equal to the number of spaces after the decimal point, counting from the left. To convert a fraction to a decimal number, we have to use the thumb rule reversely. Suppose that we want to put 3 over 10 as a decimal. This fraction has one zero in the denominator, so the index of 10 is 1. As we divide by 10 to the power of 1, we put the decimal point after one space from the right. Thus, the answer is 0 0.3. If the denominator is not in the base of 10, we can use the second method. We have to change the fraction into its equivalent fraction whose denominator is in the power of 10, such as 10, 100, 1000, and so on. Then, the equivalent fraction is converted to decimal by using the first method. So, what is 1 over 2 as a decimal? We have two steps here. First, finding an equivalent fraction. 5 over 10 is one of the equivalent fractions for 1 over 2. After that, we can convert 5 over 10 using the reverse rule of decimal number as previously explained, which gives the result 0 0.5. The other way is by using the long division method. Let's say we have the common fraction 13 over 8. To convert this to a decimal, we divide the numerator, 13, by denominator, 8, by using the long division method. At first, we divide 13 by 8, and we get 1, because the multiplication of 1 by 8 is 8, which makes almost 13. Next step is to find the difference between 13 and 8 that comes out as 5. Now, as 5 is the remainder and is less than 8, to continue the long division process, we have to introduce a 0 to 5 that adds a decimal point in the quotient value. After introducing the 0, we will continue dividing the remainder by the denominator until the remainder is 0. 
here, we have completely divided 13 by 8 until we obtain 0 as the remainder. So the fraction has now been converted into a decimal number that is 1.625. Now, let's throw a problem at you to test your decimal muscle. Follow the process and convert 9 over 4 into a decimal number by the long division method. Pause the video and solve the problem. Resume the video once you have solved it to check the answer on the screen. The answer is 2.25. Aced it? Yeah. Congratulations. Now that you have become a genius in all fields of mathematics, show them that you can transform 27 over 145 into a decimal. And brag about your answer in the comments section below. You probably have watched business series and want to sound intelligent like the candidates there. It's pretty simple. They speak numbers, decimals and percentages a lot. You can find our videos about decimal numbers for your stepping stone. So let's move forward to conversion between decimal and percentage. Let's say we have this unusual monopoly game where your money is in decimal number, but the properties are in percentage. Take $0.47 for example. How can you tell the amount of dollars that you have in percentage? There are some different ways to know it. In the first method, you must follow these steps. Number one, convert to a fraction by using the thumb rule. Number two, multiply by 100 and write it as a percentage. We will use the thumb rule of decimal numbers here. The decimal point is placed at a specific position exactly to the right of the unit position of the whole number. Once you remove the decimal, the number will be divided by powers of 10 equal to the number of spaces after the decimal point counting from the left. Since we need to change this decimal into fraction, we will remove the decimal point and divide it by powers of 10 that are equal to the number of spaces after the decimal point. 0 0.47 equals 47 divided by 10 squared, equaling 47 divided by 100. Next, multiplying the fraction by 100 and writing the answer as a percentage, which is equal to 47%. And there you have it. Using a shorter method, we could directly multiply 0 0.47 with 100 to yield 47%. We can do the conversion by simply moving the decimal point two units to the right, and here we get the same answer as before. Now, try it with other fake money, $1.32. We need to convert it into a fraction first using the previous thumb rule. Now, let's move on to step number two. Multiply this fraction by 100 and write the answer as a percentage. The answer is 132%. Now, let's learn about the reverse process, converting percentage to decimal. You obtained an 84% mark for the business task. How do you know that you are qualified enough to continue the process if the passing grade is 0.75? You can express this percentage into a fraction first. In mathematics, percentage is a number or ratio expressed as a fraction of 100. Percentage means out of 100. So, 84% equals 84 out of 100. It means that to convert it into decimal, we can directly use a long division method of dividing 84 by 100 until the zero remainder is obtained. It gives us 0 0.84, but this method costs us a longer time. Here we'll try a faster trick. So, to convert the fraction to a decimal number, we can use the same thumb rule as before, but we have to use the rule in reverse. Look at the fraction in question that is 84 out of 100. This fraction has 100 in the denominator, that is 10 to the power 2. To convert the fraction to decimals, we remove the denominator and put a decimal point counting from the right of the whole number. The index of 10 is 2, so we put the decimal two spaces from the right. Therefore, the answer will be 0 0.84. If you remember the rule, you can easily do these conversions without writing anything down. How great is that? We hope you enjoyed learning about the decimals and percentages. Keep practicing and make mistakes. Happy learning!